Social programming has convinced us that sleep is a form of weakness, it's a form of laziness. Motivation issues, forcing themselves through every day. Body composition shifts, you know, they're still getting fatter, they're still getting weaker, uh, still getting slower. I really think the way to do it is just to realize that you will break. People don't want to believe they're going to break. There's a reason that professional sports have seasons. You have to recover from that. And you can look at the symptoms of chronic sleep deprivation or chronic insomnia and look up the symptoms of ADHD. And it's actually the same process. I mean, what's going on with ADHD is that your prefrontal cortex isn't functioning as well as it should. It doesn't have as much blood flow. The neurotransmitters aren't there. It's not using as much glucose. Same thing happens. That's the first region of your brain that gets shut down when you start sleep depriving yourself. My definition of sleep is there's three components to it. The first one is there's a barrier between you and your environment, which simply means that your brain is not paying attention to the environment as much as it usually does. You're not feeling as much, you're not smelling as much, you're not hearing as much, you're not seeing as much. You're just not as involved with your environment. You also have to be able to be awakened. It's what sleep drugs do. They make you unconscious. You can't truly be awakened. When you wake somebody up on Ambien, they're not awake. Third part of my definition is that there has to be predictable neuronal patterns. There's an architecture that's supposed to be there. You're supposed to go from stage one down to stage four, and you're supposed to stay there for 90 to 120 minutes, and then you're supposed to come back up and do a little bit of REM and then do another slightly shorter deep sleep. And then progressively, over the night, it's less and less deep sleep and more and more REM sleep. And that architecture is predictable. 85 to 90 percent of us are carrying around some sleep debt it's like credit card debt it's really hard to pay off credit card debt especially if you're paying the minimum it takes a really long time to pay it off and every now and then you need to go back into more debt and then you're kind of starting over sleep debt's very similar so you lose the productivity you lose emotional intelligence right you sleep deprive or we call it sleep restrict every cell in your body has a clock and we've been talked into believing that sleep is a luxury and so people don't consider that to be a component of it but i would submit it is the most important component nothing that will screw up your communication your mental focus your attention your presence like your ability to actually be a parent that 10 percent difference that shapes us that allows us to grow that allows us to expand that allows us to get better that performance is seriously degraded if you're physiologically broken and the fastest way to physiologically break yourself is sleep deprivation the very first prerequisite to getting really good sleep is to really believe that you need sleep and to value it three to three and a half hours after the sun goes down getting our brains ready to go to sleep chronic sleep deprivation takes about 16 years off your life there's very few things that take 16 years off your life increases your risk for every disease, every kind of problem. But to me, I think more importantly is numbs you to your environment. It decreases the whole purpose of being here. Like to me, this is all about squeezing as much joy out of life as I can possibly get. And your neurochemistry is almost 100% driven by how well you're sleeping. Performance is enhanced by sleep. It really means is freedom, right? It's freedom to do what I really want to do with my life.